When I was nine months old, I had a deadly blood infection that resulted in the amputation of my right leg. When I was two years old, my family and I moved to India. And around the age of five, I discovered something that is close to true love. Legos. <laughs> okay, you probably didn't see that coming. I didn't either, so let me explain a little bit. One thing you need to know about Legos is that they're like magnets. Magnets that revengefully cling to the bottom of your feet. For parents in the audience, you probably know what I'm talking about. But for those of you who've been spared, I can assure you it is not pleasant. <laughs> Legos is where I found, I found my joy while kids my age were running around outside. I was enjoying the great indoors with my plastic blocks. This simple medium transported me to a world where I could keep away from those gawking stares, those whispered rumors, and the subtle exclusion. In the world of Legos, I was normal. I was free, I was myself, and I could express myself how I wanted to without being judged for doing so. It was then I had found my first normal. But Legos was a fantasy for me, and I kind of knew that. I was growing a sense that I personally wasn't looked at as normal. I was growing insecure, and developing an incredibly uncomfortable sense of self. Here's a few questions for you. What's your first impression of me while you see me sitting up here without two legs? Do you feel sorry for me? I invite you guys to ask yourself these questions. Are you putting me outside your box of normal? And do you think I'm not normal? These were some of the questions I had running through my head in elementary school when I moved back to the States. Elementary school. Talk about not starting off on the right foot. <laughs> <laughs> Middle and high school were especially difficult for me. My confidence was low, and as I looked at all the normal kids, a part of me wished I was more like them. But another part of me also knew that that was pretty much impossible. That led to a stinging sense of loneliness, a subject that Bridget will actually touch on in her talk later this afternoon. But in 2001, something beautiful happened when, that changed my perspective on how to interact with other people. My brother took me downhill skiing. And my first time was at a Connecticut mountain resort um, I put that in quotes just because Connecticut's not really known for its skiing. It was more of a very large hill with more ice than snow on it. For most of you East Coasters out there, I think you know what I'm talking about. But we'll call it a mountain anyways, and it was definitely one of the largest things I'd seen as a kid. Countless times I stumbled, and just as many times I fell, before something totally unexpected happened. I saw an older guy, and he had one leg, just like me, but he was skiing. Not just that, he was killing it, gliding on this so-called snow. I had to do a double take just to make sure it was real. And that's when I realized that I had found something I'd unknowingly been searching for. One string of words puts it most succinctly. I can do this. And that's just what I did. And this is what I'm doing now as a professional athlete. Just like that guy in Connecticut, I'm the one, the one with the disability killing it, putting down first ascents and descents around the world. Paradoxically, though, it was an uphill battle for me. <laughs> and in the last decade, skiing has helped me find a community that I can grow with physically, mentally, and cognitively. And my sense of normal has completely changed. I've started seeing more people start looking at me as normal. We share a common goal with similar footing, be it on one foot or two, to shred down the mountain and make sure we move in a sustainable way. And I do this by creating my own equipment to self-propel me uphill to places people with disabilities can now imagine to go. That same sense of freedom I had in my Lego playing days 
but now with a secret ingredient that had been missing the first time around. I'm able to share these experiences with others. And I've taken sharing to a whole new level, which includes working with Eagle Mount right here in Bozeman, helping other people with disabilities find their normal through sports. Also, shedding light on a marginalized population. I see our skiers dealing with the same battles that I experienced, where I can foster a community grow for people to grow within it. I find it so satisfying to help other people with disabilities find what I've been able to find and set an example for what is possible. I'm humbled and grateful for this opportunity. And with that, I'm gonna leave you with one last thought. I encourage you guys to question your definition of normal. Who and what is normal for you, especially in the light of societal pressures of having perfect bodies, what's seen as traditional gender identities, or subscribing to social class or wealth status. Instead, I invite you guys to question, apologies, I'm gonna step that back. <laughs> I encourage you to question, I encourage you to, <laughs> to grow acceptance for those that are outside of your bubble and find common ground to coexist. That truly is the definition of normal that I aim to adopt. You might find something you never expected because our differences are what make us normal. Thank you.